Hello everybody, my name is Joachim Gassen and I am with the Open Science Data Center of the TRR266 Accounting for Transparency. In this video series, we want to show you how to use R for reproducible research in accounting. So R is, as you might know, a statistical software package and installing R is relatively straightforward. As you can see here, you just have to go to the web page, identify uh, the R version that you need for your computing environment and then download it. Here in this video, we will use a fresh Windows 10 install. So um, basically, if you use Windows, you can just follow along. If you use Mac or Unix, things will be a little bit different, but um, uh, normally uh, you will be able to figure it out. So while um, we can watch this downloading process here. Um, I will take the liberty to talk a little bit about what we have in store in this video series. So in essence, this video series is um, about enabling you to clone a repository that uh, has a small analysis, a small toy analysis of discretionary accruals and to reproduce this analysis on your local computer. Okay, in order to do so, you will have to install several software um, packages, R being the first, and then we will continue to install R Studio, and then we will install Git and R Tools, and then we will clone the repository from the TRR GitHub page and uh, yeah, build it. So um, this, the structure of the repository has been designed so that uh, it is a blueprint for a typical accounting research projects. So it starts with uh, pulling data from WRDS, so from the Wharton Research Data uh, Service, and then um, um, continues to calculate discretionary accruals based on that data, so prepare a sample, and then it will run an analysis and produce a paper, uh, as well as a slide deck. Uh, so um, while this is all very, um, let's say, easy or bare bones in terms of the structure what we do and certainly not a full-blown research project. I think it has all the important bits and pieces that you normally have in a research project. So maybe differently from what you are doing, this project is designed to be um, easy to um, port to other platforms and to other environments and thus easy to reproduce. Yeah, And as you will see, um, it shouldn't take you more than, let's say, one and a half hours or two hours to uh, to reproduce this um, repository from scratch. And this is how it's supposed to be, right? So research should be easy to reproduce. And this is why we are having this video series here. So in the meantime, what you can see is uh, that we successfully downloaded R and now we're installing it. Here you see some um, default or some options that you can choose. It's completely fine to just leave the default here. I'm excluding the translations. Main reason being that translations normally are just annoying when you Google for help. Yeah, and error messages want to be Googled and you want to Google the English version and not your own native language version. Okay, so then here, um, what I don't do for R, I don't create any taskbar or menu items for R itself. Um, the reason simply being that um, normally you don't call R directly, but instead what you do is you will um, use R Studio, which will be which we will be installing in the next uh, video. Okay, so R is just the programming uh, environment itself. And our studio is an integrated development uh, environment that you can use then to code also in R, but also in other languages. More on this in the next video. So the repository that we are that we will be um, f um, cloning and uh, reproducing is is very much R centered for the time being. But this doesn't have to stay that way. So if you are watching this, but um, think about well, not sure whether I should be doing R. I'm I'm a vivid Python or Stata user. You know, we would be very happy to have you cloning our project and maybe um, or forking it and then um, um, doing changes or suggesting code changes to also include your favorite programming language, right? So while we believe that R is a very useful programming language for reproducible work in uh, accounting or finance or econ or whatever, um, by no means is the only programming language that you can use. Uh, so. Um, Stata is still very popular uh, along, among economists and for very good reasons. Um, the main reason why we don't advocate Stata as uh, the programming language um, of choice for open science is simply because 
it's licensed, right? So it comes with a costly license. Not everybody has this license. And uh, so this is a barrier to open science, right? So because if somebody wants to reproduce your work, they need to have a license um, in Stator. And I've been hearing people saying, well, everybody has a license for Stator, <laughs> but A, this is simply not true, and B, um, it is mostly applies in, in economics, right? So as soon as you wander into different fields, you will see that Stator is not that heavily used as it is in economics, okay? So now this very uh, first video already comes to an end. You see that the green bar is approaching its, uh, its end, right? So, and we will be having our install shortly. So um, here we go. And now it's time for you to take a break or to watch the second video where we will install our studio. Okay, so see you there. Thanks and bye.